anyways, the Los Angeles Times is laying off people, mass layoffs on all of these legacy companies. Take a look. LA Times announcing massive layoffs today, cutting the jobs of at least 115 employees. It's the largest workforce reduction in the paper's 142-year history. The billionaire owner of the Times says the cuts are necessary because the paper is losing 30 to 40 million dollars a year. KTLA's Samantha Cortez is live in El Segundo with details and reactions. Sam. Right, the Times hemorrhaging money, leaving many to wonder what's going to happen to the largest metropolitan newspaper in the country. 115 journalists, 20 percent of the Los Angeles Times newsroom gone in one fell swoop Tuesday. Reporters, editors, managers slashed from the roster. Journalism, especially newspaper journalism, is a calling. You get into this not because you expect to be rich, not because you expect this to create some sort of fabulous Woodward and Bernstein style career, but rather because you've got a need to go out and find stories and tell them. KTLA consumer reporter David Lazarus is a former columnist for the LA Times. He gave us a former insider's perspective. I thought it was interesting that Dr. Patrick Soon Chong, the owner of the the owner of the LA Times said that the paper is not in turmoil and there is a plan for recovery. And that seems to be, well, troublesome because of course this paper is in turmoil and there doesn't seem to be much of a plan at all. LA billionaire Dr. Patrick Soon Xiong told the LA Times staff cuts were necessary as the company is losing 30 to $40 million a year. He says the paper lost revenue during COVID and then again during the summer of strikes. And in hindsight, Soon Xiong is frustrated with the money and resources spent on things like podcasts and video publishing that did not generate revenue. But Laz says he is sympathetic to media managers across the country who are asking, what do we do? I think the real Achilles heel here is the fact that we are now all on limited budgets when it comes to our subscriptions and our streaming choices. On Friday, the LA Times Guild walked off the job to protest looming cuts, asking the company to offer buyouts to more senior staff. So y'all walked out in the midst of a company that's losing 30 to $40 million only to try to bully the owner to try to buy y'all out and give y'all raises. And then y'all thought that protesting in front of the LA Times was going to make sense couple different thoughts here. This entitlement spirit is going away and it's going to be cleansed. And you know how it's going to be cleansed? By reality. And the reality is all of y'all that think that y'all privileged and that you so valued in society, the value that you have is based off of the consumer. And just because you've been doing it for a long time don't mean that your lack of innovation is going to keep you with a job or keep these companies open. And I keep telling y'all, we we having these same conversations with so many different technologies, even within the automotive industry. And I keep saying, listen, if you're not innovating, if you're not changing, if you're not adapting, if you're not preparing yourself for what's to come, you are going to be out of a job and you're going to be trying to figure out how to do it. And so now the L.A. Times and one fell swoop just eliminated all of those people that was walking on that picket line that had their bullhorns and they had their yellow and black and white on. And now you can go ahead and sit at home and try to collect an, an unemployment check, especially since Gavin Newsom is making sure that he pour money into social services. So now you can get on the social services line and you can become a part of the unemployment, the unemployed, right? The underemployed. Don't worry. Burger King is hiring out there. McDonald's is hiring. I heard that uh, you can go and get a job at any fast food joint and you can make over $20 an hour. You can go and get it. You can go and get it. And I'm just telling you, look. We've already out innovated everything that's happening over there at the Los Angeles Times. YouTubers, uh, social media, it's evolving, it's changing. Uh, I recently purchased the Apple Vision Pro because I'm going to be one of the earliest adopters. I get mine on February 2nd. And I'm going to be one of the earliest adopters in order to try to figure out how I can make that work and how I can innovate that and use that to continue to reach out and give my people what they need in order to be successful. So, you know... Innovation is key. Change is key. And just because y'all think that y'all cool or you think that, oh, nobody is looking in to get rich in here. We just we provide a service and, you know, it's a calling. Well, call the unemployment office and make sure that you put your claim in every two weeks 
so that you can go ahead and go and get a job over at Burger King so that you can get my fries hot. Y'all keep protesting, thinking that you're valuable. You keep getting these liberal arts degrees. We're going to show you. So the L.A. Times is practically going out of business. They're already losing 30 to $40 million a year. And they're going to go under. And while they're going under, people like me are going to continue to innovate and do the things that's great for you guys and continue to give you the news that's much more consolidated and better and give you a view so, they, so that you can actually learn and not be uh, given insight based off of an agenda that's being given to you. Uh, in addition to that, Netflix had blowout earnings. And when I say blowout, I mean nobody expected for them to add this many subscribers. See, they unsubscribing from the LA Times, and then they going and getting a subscription on Netflix. Take a look. We already have Netflix results. We're going to go to Julia Borson now for those. Julia. Yes, we have a beat in terms of revenue. The company reporting 800, I'm sorry, the company reporting 8.83 billion in revenue ahead of the 8.71 billion in revenue expected. Earnings per share are coming in lower than anticipated at $2.11 versus uh, the $2.22 that analysts have been looking for. But the stock is higher in after hours trading because of the net subscriber additions, 13 million in net ads. The company had been expected to add about 9 million, just under 9 million new subscribers, but instead it reported 13.12 million. We will be digging through the numbers and back to you with more. Okay, Julia Borson, we'll keep our eye out. In the meantime, let's bring in our market panel. Joining us now is Vital Knowledge founder, Adam Christofuli. So Netflix added 13.1 million subscribers. Nobody could have anticipated that, that kind of blowout quarter. Nobody. They are growing rapidly. They only expected them to add 9 million subscribers. They're destroying everybody. They're destroying Disney+. Plus. Um, when I cut on my TV... And if I decide that I want to watch something, the first thing that I check out is either YouTube, YouTube TV, or Netflix. It's only those three. Those are the, the three that I check out. Oh, and I do like to uh, open up Max simply because they got some of the legacy shows and some great shows that I check out like The Wire and The Sopranos and stuff like that. But in a general sense, yo, we got to have a discussion this weekend on Stock Club because I might divest in one thing and go all in on Netflix. I used to have Netflix and I got rid of it. Um, in order to go into something else, and that something else has actually done really well for me. It was Meta. Uh, so I repositioned myself and I bolstered my Meta a stock. But I think that Netflix is something that we need to um, look at and deep dive into a little bit more as far as where they're going in their competition because they continue to innovate. They're not slowing down. They're doing really well. They got a co-CEOs. You guys know that even in the last stock club and throughout the Patreon, I've been telling y'all the eight things that we look for when we look to invest in a company. I broke that down even more and I added some examples when we did the last stock club in order to set the foundation for what we were going to be talking about. So if you're not a part of the Patreon and you're not a, a part of stock club, we're going to do that on Sunday and it should be very, very interesting. Uh, some of the things that we're going to go over, we're going to go over the hospitality industry, the hotels, um, airlines, Airbnbs. All of that. We're going to go over all of that and we're going to try to anticipate where we can reposition ourselves and if it makes sense to invest in those companies. So, yeah, Netflix had an absolutely positively blowout quarter. Uh, and then last but not least, Biden wins in New Hampshire. <laughs> Take a look. But he was getting heckled even when he did a rally. He was getting heckled. He got heckled over 11 times. Take a look. Joe and I had a chance to sit down. So Biden and Kamala Harris had a campaign rally in Virginia while they were winning in New Hampshire very easily because they don't really even have any challengers uh, for their right in primary. Um, and so he's starting to hit the campaign trail. He's talking a lot about abortion. He's talking a lot about Roe v. Wade. He's not talking anything about the migrant crisis whatsoever. And the people love him. That's on the trail. So we can expect for it to be a race. I think that one thing that we didn't expect in the last election was that the worst thing that you can ever do is underestimate your competition. The minute that you start thinking that they sleep and the minute that you underestimate them is the minute that they start to take control of the situation. And so 
Never keep your hand off the wheel. Never fall asleep at the wheel. Always pay attention. Popular, I mean, I'm telling you, they have a lot of supporters, a lot. And when I mean a lot, there's a lot of people that stand in for Biden. I think that he's too old. He looks a little too seasoned for me, which means that Kamala Harris is going to be at the, uh, you know, at the forefront. We got to really pay attention and we got to start, you know, having a conversation on what's going on around us. Because, again, they have a lot of supporters. So, 